Evelyn to Philip, female dated February 9th, 1945. Dearest Phil, Last night, after posting your letter, I went to Ben's and managed to get ten more pieces for my package of candy and gum. I've never tried some of the bars, but I'm sure you'll enjoy them. They have so many new things around to make up for the shortage that I can't keep up with them. Eddie is making up the package, and it is being mailed today. Mr. Bell had just walked out for lunch, and I'm endeavoring to knock this out this female before he returns. I shall make up another package of tuna, cheese, crackers, and whatever else I can get, as you requested in the letter I received yesterday, whenever I can get the items. You must realize, honey, that I have very, very little time for shopping, and these days you really have to hunt out any item you desire or get it from someone you know who handles it. I think the situation becomes worse with each passing week. Adele's speech and activities have not been discussed for some time, so I suppose I so suppose I give you a little detail. Got to get this filled somehow, and I'm sure you won't mind. The other day she happened to notice that my loafer shoes, as they are called, have a hole in the sole. She said, Mommy, your shoes is torn. Take it to the shoemaker and have it fixed. I told her to get after Uncle Eddie today and see that he makes up the package and mails it. She said, wrap the package for Daddy and take it to the post office. And afterthought, Mommy, you got to give me money. This morning when she awoke, she was a little boisterous, and I told her to keep very quiet because everyone was sleeping. She said, Mommy... I'll be a good girl. I won't make Harry mad. She refers to you often now and says, Daddy coming home soon. Say hello, pumpkin. I feel reasonably sure that she will associate you with your picture once you do come home, and I doubt if you'll have any difficulty being as friendly with her as I am. Once in a while she'll say, Mommy, I love you. Pick me up. She gets lovey-dovey and wants to kiss me. Sort of reminds me of you, honey. I notice that my mail has fallen off again, for I've only had two letters in eight days. When you consider that I received your V-mail of 26 January over a week ago, it isn't any too good. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow will bring something for me. Eddie mailed off the package of chocolate bars, film, some cigarettes, candy, some cigarettes, gum, etc. today, and I shall try to get another with the tuna off, as I promised, within the week. It was nice out today, but the snow continues to remain. It's such solid ice that it will probably take weeks for it to melt. A little more of the weather we had these past few day, two days, and it will disappear completely. I guess you know, darling, that I adore you. Not only that, but I love you, too. Surprise, your Ev. Philip to Evelyn, 9 February, 1945. Dearest Darling, I'm having the darndest time thinking of things to write about these days. You see, sweet, I've been kept very busy in the orderly room for a long time now. And while I think of plenty of odd little items to tell you about during the day, they somehow escape one by the evening when I settle down to writing. Guess I'll have to start jotting down notes on a memo pad as these things occur to me. Then, too, I haven't been off the base since New Year's Eve, and I don't have anything to tell you about my leaves as once I had. Bert and Evelyn must think I'm dead or something. I haven't seen them in so long. When the weather gets better, I'll be going into town again more frequently. That reminds me. You remember, Chippy, that I had been holding your doodad till I could get to town to have it engraved. But just today, I learned from one of the guys that they do a very poor brand of engraving in these parts. So I have decided to send it on to you as is. It is much too plain in its present form, 
but I have a hunch you'll have a pretty definite idea how you'll want it finished off. So I suggest you take it round to a jeweler and let him tell you if he can dress it up to your taste. I've managed to get a few pounds ahead, honey, and because this is intended as my anniversary gift to you, I want to pay the charge for the engraving. So let me know the cost, will you? I'll be sending it along just as soon as I can find a suitable box to mail it in. I'm still waiting a chance to order those things at the PX. The PX is only open from 11.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. And believe it or not, I've been too busy each day for weeks now between those times to be able to knock off work long enough to get down there and fill out the necessary forms. Talking about filling out forms gives me a wonderful idea, but I guess that will have to wait. Anyway, honey, just continue to be patient and trust me not to forget to get these things off to you eventually. The mail is held up again, else you've reverted to using air mail, because I haven't received any for a couple of days. On the other hand, I'm just too occupied to even attempt to drop a line to all those people whom I owe letters. Please make my apologies for me, will you, sweet? Especially to Mom. I know she must be pretty disappointed in me. It's so long since I promised to write to her. I would love to start a letter to her right now, but it's 11 o'clock already, and the guys are all in bed and beginning to look daggers at me for keeping the lights on. So I'll say a hasty good night, kiss you, not too hastily, and whisper the old time-honored, I love you, Chippy, just a, a one more line in which to hug and kiss our own Adele. Love to all from your Phil.